Anticipating the Future, an introduction to value chain mapping. Now, before I start, I, I quickly want to do a quick shout out to the UK government. If you don't know, yesterday they selected ODF as the standard for document formats. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so my name is Simon Wardley. Uh, quick word of warning uh, before I start. Um, I'm from England. Uh, if you don't know where England is, it's a small country south of the USA in terms of the FIFA World Cup football rankings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also a scientist by training. I happen to like graphs and data. I also happen to use kit and pictures, so apologies for that. And I'm also a recovering management consultant. Um, I'm still in therapy, but I'm doing well, so thank you. Now, in terms of common lies in business, my favorite lie is we have a strategy. Um, doesn't mean we ha don't have strategy documents. We tend to have huge strategy documents. But when you rip out things like purchasing decisions, implementation details, operational details, tactical choices like BYOD, otherwise known as bring your own disaster, um, which is all about the how, what, and when of action, uh, the why tends to be very small, tends to be very vague. In fact, most of the time, we are simply copying what everybody else is doing. So 67% of companies have big data, social media, cloud. Therefore, we need to have big data, social media, and cloud. Now, this isn't uh, new. Uh, we used to do exactly the same. In uh, 1994, we used to call it total quality management, business process reengineering, economic value add. Um, and in 1984, we used to write books about this stuff. You know, 62 companies you should emulate or copy. Uh, Kodak, uh, Atari, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, this is all based upon an idea of backward causality. If A does B and uh, A is successful, then if you do B, you too will be successful. So being a scientist, I thought, can we automate this process of copying? So I attended a lot of conferences, listening to people talk about strategy, try to identify various memes, or what I like to call business-level abstractions of a healthy strategy, or blahs for short. Um, so here are the common blahs, digital business, big data, disruptive, innovative, collaborative, competitive advantage, ecosystem, blah, 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 blah. Um, I created a strategy template for this. Our strategy is blah. <laughs> we will lead a blah effort of the market through our use of blah and blah to build a blah and so forth. Um, then I took common blahs and the blah temp8 and auto-generated 64 strategies. <laughs> so let's go through them. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> our strategy is customer focus. We will lead a disruptive effort of the market through our use of innovative social media and big data to build a collaborative cloud-based ecosystem, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, strategy two. <laughs> our strategy is innovative digital business. We will lead a growth effort of the market through our use of customer-focused competitive advantage and disruptive social media to build a collaborative revolution, uh, and so on and so on. Number three, no, I'm not really, um, but what... So I sent these out to a load of friends, put them online, and I got about 150 responses uh, of three common types. The first one was, this is more or less the exact wording from our business plan. <laughs> the second was, I've seen two of these used already. <laughs> and the third of one was, are you for hire? <laughs> So a friend of mine took these, put them online as a web service. Uh, so this is strategy as a service. If you're... <laughs> uh, you can fork it on GitHub, by the way. It's completely open. Uh, so if you ever need a strategy, just type the URL, bang, you're done. No need for consultants. Hunky-dory. And I suppose that's the end of my presentation. <laughs> Except for there was one other bit I wanted to talk about, which was mapping. You see, in... If you ask a general, why does a general bombard a hill, in military terms, they normally don't respond uh, because 67% of other successful generals bombard hills. So, look, they're bombing a hill, I better do the same. No, they tend to use maps, and maps are quite useful because they tell you where you can attack, why is a relative statement, why here over there, then you're into the how, what, and the when. 
So in military, where and why is all about situational awareness, uh, how, what and when is all about the action. Uh, unfortunately, in business, we don't tend to have much situational awareness. We tend to copy others. So why is this the case? Well, business is a complex thing. So activities, practice, data, all sort of in a melting pot. And we try to make sense of it through box and wire diagrams, things like business process maps or IT systems diagrams. Now, when you expand these, and if I ask you, what's your strategy for a well-perception server? I don't know. I don't even know what it is. Um, unfortunately, the diagram gives us no context. So you often get business using one diagram, technology using another diagram. Nobody can speak to each other. So what I wanted to do many years ago was turn it into a map. Now, I knew that the business consisted of value chains. And the best way of describing a value chain is with a cup of tea. So you start off with a user. They need a cup of tea. A cup of tea needs other things like tea and hot water. Hot water needs other things like water and a kettle. And a kettle needs a thing like power. So you can create a chain of needs. So in 2005, this was the company I ran. This was one of the box and wire diagrams. We turned it into a value chain. It happened to be online image, photo manipulation, storage. Fabulous, except for it turned out to be completely useless. And the reason why it's useless is that businesses don't stand still. So Nokia used to be a paper mill. Then it became a plastics manufacturer. Then it became a telecommunications company. Don't know what it's becoming today. And they change because new things appear and they diffuse from early adopters to laggards, so it's all random. Well, it turns out they don't just appear, they also evolve. So you start off with a phone, you get a better phone, you start off with uh, Parthian battery, you get the um, Tesla Westinghouse utility provision for electricity. And you can map that process of evolution, genesis, custom-built product, rental services, commodity, and utility. So Parthian battery, Custom-built systems, Hippolyte Pixie, Siemens generators, Tesla and Westinghouse, utility provision or computing, the Z3, 1943, custom-built systems like Leo, uh, first products, IBM 650, rental services like Timshare, commodity hardware, and utility services like Cloud. Now, this whole process is cr controlled or driven by competition, both demand and supply. So what I have is value chain describes an organization, evolution describes change, and I can combine those two to create a map. And so that's what I did. I took the map of our value chain, or the line of our value chain, added evolution, generated the first map of our business in 2005. So what? Why does that matter? Well, maps turn out to be very useful for management. So if you have a map of a business, you know that everything is evolving through competition. And as it evolves, it changes characteristics. It goes from this uncharted space of the novel and new. The first time it appears, it's chaotic, uncertain, unpredictable. And over time, it becomes industrialized. So it becomes ordered, no, measured, standard, dull. Now, those are polar opposites. And because there are polar opposites, there's no such thing as one-size-fits-all methods to management. So for example, Agile is very good in the uncharted, very weak in the industrialized, whereas Six Sigma is very good in the industrialized, weak in the uncharted, and Lean is good in the middle. So you take a big project like UK government, 70 billion high-speed rail link. That's the box and wire diagram. Can't really use that for management. You turn it into a map, and all of a sudden you can go, this stuff should be outsourced to utility providers. This stuff should be built with off-the-shelf products. This stuff should be built in-house Agile techniques. Maps are also good for scenario planning. This is a security company. And once you have a map, you can say, well, what happens if things drive to more of a commodity? Do a commodity play on identity, or we try and create trust as a service? Maps are generally useful because if you look at them and you try to play games with them, you can see what works and what doesn't work. And you can also learn about common economic patterns. So for example, as things evolve through competition, they not only become more efficient, they enable higher order systems to appear, new sources of value and worth. So for example, electricity enables radio, television, and computing. And that's an effect known as componentization. We also discover that occurred throughout history. Electricity enabled computing, enabled analytics, enabled intelligent agents. We also discover we have inertia due to past success. We also discover that certain things in the economy are predictable. So we can't predict what's going to appear, but we know that when something appears, it will commoditize over time through competition. We can't actually say when that's going to happen. That depends upon individual actors' actions. But we do know as it becomes a commodity, new things will appear. And they will evolve through competition. 
We also know that there's a common economic pattern, what we call peace, war, and wonder. So you get a relatively peaceful state of competition, big vendors build up, inertia to change, somebody enters the market, commoditizes the industry, disrupts the past, causes an explosion of higher-order systems. So we know what's going to happen, we just don't know when. But still, companies get disrupted by this, even though it's a highly predictable change, and even though people like Douglas Parkhill write the book on the cloud computing 48 years ago. Now, it seems that we have this wonderful uncertainty principle in the economic system. We can often say when stuff is going to happen, not what, or we can say what's going to happen, but not when. Now, if you have a map of the environment and if you know these economic principles and what you can predict, you can manipulate it to your favor as long as you can move components. Now, all the components evolve due to competition, and you can accelerate that by use of open means. So, for example, you can drive something from left to right by opening it up, open source, open data, open APIs. You can, if you're evil, slow it down through the use of patents, the use of FUD, or the use of constraints. So now we come to strategy. If you have a map of the environment, you know everything's evolving. That tells you where you can attack. Why one over another is a question of the economics around it. What are the predictable patterns? Who has inertia? How you can manipulate that? And you can use this to incredible effect. So I used to run strategy for Ubuntu. 2008, we were fighting Red Hat on the server OS. We knew that compute was going to a compute utility. We knew what the predictable patterns were, that we were going to get new practices, that someone would develop a platform. So we changed our focus. We decided to own the future and let the future catch up with us. So in 2008, the little blue line at the bottom is server OS. That was us. By 2010, we were pretty much 70% of the cloud market. So does it really matter? 2012, I did a little study, level of strategic play against the use of open, 160 companies, bubbles, bigger the bubbles, the more companies. Turned out the companies with high levels of strategic play who used open as a weapon were doing very well, market cap growth, positive seven years. Companies at the bottom, low levels of strategic play, even those using open didn't do so well. In fact, those at the bottom were open by default. You know them, oh, we should open stuff, throw it over the window, pop a champagne cork, we've won. Um, those at the top were open by purpose, deliberately manipulating markets through open means. So quick summary. Mapping is very simple. Just focus on user needs, map the value chain, add evolution, look at the methods you use, and then learn how to manipulate. There should be an added E. Somehow that got missed. Anyway, my name's Simon Wardley. Spot on. Thank you very much.